Good morning, blessed Sunday. Pastor Shane here, Worship Without Walls. I want to thank you for joining us here for our service, our worship, our word, and our prayer on this blessed Sunday. Let us jump right in. Let us pray. Mighty God, in whom we know the power of redemption, you stand among us in the shadows of our time as we move through every sorrow and trial of this life. Uphold us with knowledge of the final morning, when, in the glorious presence of your risen Son, we will share in his resurrection, redeemed and restored to the fullness of life and forever free to be your people. Amen and amen. We turn to 388 by his spirit. If Christ is in you, your spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. If by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. We continue to 475, a love that never fails. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely. Love does not seek its own. Love is not provoked. Love thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Our opening hymn is Lead Me, Guide Me. Me. I am blind with 
without thy light to see. Lord, just always let me thy servant be. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. Lead me, O Lord, lead me. Amen. And amen. Let us turn now to our blue hymnal. The affirmation of our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen and amen. We turn now to 671 in the remembrance of Christ's temptation. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting four days and forty nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said, Throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. And Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the devil took him to the very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All of this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The devil then left him, and angels came and attended him. Here in our reading out of our hymnal. We open our Bibles now to the book of Psalm. Psalm 31. One through five and 15, 16. In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me. For you are my strength. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face shine upon your servant. Save me for your mercy's sake. Here ends our reading from the book of Psalm. Thanks be to God. Our next hymn is Abide With Me. Oh 
turn once again into our Bibles, to our first reading from the book of Acts. And it's from the book of Acts, chapter 7. Verses 55 through 60. Let us begin. But he, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God, and said, Look, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord. And they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their cloths at the feet of the young man named Saul. And they stoned Stephen, 
as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my gift, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with their sins. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Here ends our first reading. Thanks be to God. And thanks be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and dies and reigns for us. Beloved, let us pray. Holy God, you have called us to follow in the ways of your risen Son and to care for those who are our companions, not only with words of comfort, but with acts of love. Seeking to be true friends of all, we offer our prayers on behalf of the church and of the world. Dear Heavenly Father, we have a list of loved ones to lift up in prayer. We ask that you receive this ministry, our followers, our friends, those who we follow on social media. We look to you, Lord, and we ask that you lift up Nick, his mom, Robin, her family. We ask that you lift up David, his child, his family. We ask that you lift up our brothers and sisters in the LGBTQIA2S plus community, our trans brothers and sisters being persecuted all over this country. We look to you, Lord, as we lift up our black, brown, and indigenous brothers and sisters who are troubled, sick, ill. Lord, we lift up to you our lists of loved ones. Chris, T, Lance, we lift up to you, Rosie, we lift up to you, David, we lift up to you, James, we lift up, D, we lift up, Caden, we lift up, Nikki, we lift up, Charlotte, we lift up, Robin, we lift up, Nora, we lift up, Jenny, we lift up those who don't even know your truths. Because, Lord, we know that through you is a guided path, a guided path in light and truth. Lord, we look to you and we ask for your healing to open the hearts and minds of those who would use your name and use the good book for evil, to condemn others just as those who condemned Jesus did. Those that practice political and capital religion instead of choosing to follow the truth and the light in the gospel spoken through your son. We ask that you guide us in the path of discipleship, Lord, so that as you have blessed us, we may be a blessing for others, bringing the promise of the kingdom near by our words and our deeds, bringing your kingdom down onto this earth instead of working to get to the kingdom afterwards. Lord, we know through you all things are possible, and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Our next hymn is Light of the World. <laughs> your servants shine. So how could there be any darkness in me if you are the light of the world? If you are the light of the world. You are the bread of life, O oh Lord broken to set us free. So how 
could there be any hunger in me if you are the bread of life if you are the bread of life you've overcome the world oh lord and given us victory so how could i fear when trouble is near if you've overcome the world if you've overcome the world wipe every tear away O oh lord and teach us the song of the lamb the promise is true but it's still up to you to wipe every tear away. Wipe every tear away. To wipe every tear away. Amen and amen. Now, beloved, we turn once again into our blue hymnal. And this is a hymn that I have read before the, the lyrics of, and it's all your anxiety. And I'd like to read that again. Is there a heart overbound by sorrow? Is there a life weighed down by care? Come to the cross, each burden bearing. All your anxiety, leave it there. All your anxiety, all your care. Bring to the mercy seat, leave it there. Never a burden he cannot bear. Never a friend like Jesus. Verse 2. No other friends so keen to help you. No other friends so quick to hear. No other place to leave your burden. No other one to hear your prayer. All your anxiety, all your care, bring to the mercy seat. Leave it there. Never a burden he cannot bear. Never a friend like Jesus. Verse 3, come then at once, delay no longer, heed his entry, kind and sweet. You need not fear a disappointment, you shall find peace at the mercy seat. All your anxiety, all your care, bring to the mercy seat, leave it there. Never a burden he cannot bear, never a friend like Jesus. <clears throat> and we thank you, Lord, for being a presence in our life now and always. We know, Lord, that through you all things are possible and through you all burdens can vanish away. Beloved, we turn now once more into our Bibles to our second reading for this morning from the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. As a newborn babies desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious coming to him as to a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. You also, as living stones, are being built up in spiritual house, a holy priesthood, 
to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, the stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the word to which they also were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy. Here ends our second reading. Thanks be to God. Brothers, sisters, please join me in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, leading us not to temptation, but delivering us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us continue forth in prayer, redeeming God the gifts we bring to you this day. We dedicate to the work of kingdom building. Even more, we offer ourselves as material for this work. Imperfect as we are, we know with Christ as the cornerstone. You can build your vision of mercy, justice, peace, and compassion here in our midst. In Christ our rock and redeemer. Amen. And amen. And in Christ our rock and redeemer, if you feel compelled to tithe with this ministry, know that it will go to helping people in need. We have our Bible ministry. We have other ways that you can tithe. You can do direct tithes. You can also log into our shops, purchase merchandise, where the proceeds from that, whether it's mental health or regular ministry merchandise, all goes back into the communities and into helping those who are in need. This month of May, we will be donating to organizations that help youth mental health, that help with adult crisis. So if you tithe with us this month, whatever does get brought in will go to those things, will go to mental health, will go to help youth in need. will go to help those suffering. But it's if you feel compelled to. And with that said, I'd like to turn gears back into our Bibles. And when I say back into our Bibles, I'm bringing us to the Gospel of John. It's the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may also be. And there I go, you know. And the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, 
We do not know where you are going, and know, how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who dwell, believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Here ends our gospel of our Lord. Praise be to Christ. And praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and died and reigns in heaven, who sacrificed himself for us. And this brings me, my beloved friends, to my message for this morning. And my message for this morning is I've entitled The Lord's Map. And I'm sure we've all seen maps in our life. Maybe not. I know if you travel up and down highways, whether it's family trips or just commuting, that you would be able to stop at rest areas where there will be maps and different things, pamphlets, brochures. And this is where I'm going to date myself a little bit for the younger crowd. But I grew up in a time where there wasn't a GPS. You weren't able to pick up your smartphone and type in an address and it would tell you where to go. You had a physical paper map, and I really wish I had one here today with me to show. But we would literally have to stop and pull over to map out our direction. When I was a little bit older, we had the internet, so you were able to print off directions from such things like MapQuest. And, but I never grew up with going on trips with my parents and having the GPS tell me where to turn. In fact, it wasn't until my adulthood where that GPS became my map, telling me which directions to turn and when to turn. It's amazing nowadays the amount of technology we, we truly rely on for everything we do, whether it's traveling, commuting to work, going to a friend's house that we haven't been to before. Possibly, if you were part of a give and take type thing or an online yard sale going to pick up and something you found online that you're purchasing or getting for free from someone else to repurpose or reuse. And with all of this, the simplest things come from the maps that we don't always see. And I say this because I want to ask how many of you have felt lost? In your purpose in life? How many of you have felt where you don't know the direction that your life is going? For many of us, when we hit college age, we don't know all the time where our life is headed. We might think we know. We might have decided that this is the path and the journey that we're going to go on. I, for one, can vouch that that has happened in my life. I sat there from a junior in high school to a senior and said, this is my path, this is my journey, this is what I'm going to do. 
said I'm gonna run and open my own restaurant. I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna train and work hard to be able to run a kitchen, to run the front of the house, to know the ins and outs. Worked 15 plus years in the food industry, in hospitality, to ultimately, and I've probably shared this before, but ultimately have an injury on the job lay me up for around a year or so. And during that time, you start to really think of like, well, what can I do? What can I go back to? How am I going to address things? And I took all the knowledge that I accumulated working in restaurants, working in physical labor on my feet, 15 plus hours a day, working in kitchens, my training and knowledge that I took from four years of college and education for that. And I started learning to give it back to those in need. I started working for a company, running classes and teaching classes on hospitality to re-enter people who were at rehab clinics back into the job field, giving them the education that they might never have learned of proper procedure when it came to interviews and resumes and proper procedure of how to act and be appropriate on the job. What is deemed terms of firing and what is deemed not. And yet at that point, I still didn't quite know where my roadmap was going to lead. I didn't know that my map was going to lead down a path of ministry and servitude from a whole new level. But yet it's ironic that nowadays I can sit there and I can look at you, beloved friends, and say to you, that what I'm doing now is amazing. What I'm doing now is more fulfilling than any job that has ever handed me a paycheck. Yesterday I looked at my Facebook and it reminded me that five years ago yesterday was my first live giving a message of hope. Doing a lot of rambling at the time as well. But with that saying and rambling, it was, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll, you know, post messages, little sermons type things without walls, but the ultimate message that I gave as my first message five years ago was the message that you don't need to be in a fancy building. You don't need to be in an arena filled with thousands of people. You don't need to even be anywhere but your car because my first message was delivered from the driver's seat of my car. And yet, I reminded everyone then you don't even have to be the biggest voice in the biggest church to still be able to spread messages of hope, of love, and of light. To spread the true messages of what the gospel teaches us. To be able to walk in light, to be able to guide someone else in light and love. And to be able to have that relationship I'm a firm believer in my journey, in my destinations along my map, that the relationship with Christ is much more important than the religion telling you it. Because we may know where we are, but we can still be confused. We can still not know the right choice to make when problems come to our lives, when problems persist. And I've had those situations in my life, and I'm sharing this with you to try to relate, and hopefully maybe something I'm saying radiates with you this morning. I had a choice to make when I was sitting out of work, injured, of what's my next path. 
on my map. You see, there's many roads that lead down our map. There's many splits. And one choice could be we could go this way and one choice could be we could go that way. When I read from our hymnal this morning, I purposefully read Christ's temptation because it was the reminder that just as we are tempted each and every day to do things out of love or do things out of hate and evil, whether we are saying it is from this book or not, we have that choice. We have the choice to go down the correct road, the correct road leading out of love and light and servitude, humbling ourselves to others, understanding and work, looking to understand what someone else is going through in their life to hopefully bring them hope and love. Or we have the path of, as I would put it, condemnation. Where we sit there and say that this little scripture here means that you are cast into hell for eternity and there's nothing you can do. And that is the same scripture passage that apparently condemns your pastor as well for standing up on path A of love and supporting those, standing up for those, sitting with those. It's the same split in the map that had Jesus having the choice with the devil of he could be the ruler over all or he could sit there and say, Satan away with you. It's the same choice that Jesus made when he sat there and could have hung out with the Pharisees and the lawmakers all day, but instead chose to sit with the tax collector and the prostitute and the whore. And he sat there, and instead of having it be only men who witnessed everything and pled, said what happened is true as witnesses, had women, in a day when women didn't have the same rights, be the witness, showing equality for both sexes not just one. Showing strength for both sexes, not just one. But we do have to go back and realize that not knowing the right thing to do can make us feel lost inside. And I'm never going to once say that I know exactly how my trans and non-binary brothers and sisters feel. But there have been days where I have kind of felt this way. And I'm not sure if it's the same way they feel, but let me explain. I have those who sit over here that will use this book to condemn, that tell me I'm not a true Christian because I believe in love. There are those that on this side tell me I'm going to hell. There are those that tell me on this side that I'm not a true pastor or a preacher. There are those on this side that tell me that I need to repent for my sins and turn my ways correct. This is the side of capitalistic power, greed, this is also the side of a church that has lost its ways, as far as I'm concerned, from the ways of Christ. And then I have this side over here. That just the other day persecuted me because I'm Christian. That lumped me in the same category as this side. And as I stand in the middle of both sides throwing and casting hate, my reply to this side that lumped me over here with the side of the Christian that wants to condemn and spew hate and lies. My reply to this side was, I will continue to be an ally even if you continue to show hate. My reply to this side is educate yourself and stop listening to false pro preachers in pro pulpits who are only using this book for spreading hate. And I understand where this side came from. I understand that this side has seen hurt, that this side has been attacked by this side. 
But in that moment of that same day, in that same moment in time where both sides were casting hate, this side because I support LGBTQIA2S plus members and stand as an ally to our trans family and our LGBTQIA2S plus family. And then this side who does not know, did not look at my any of my online profiles, did not look a lick of a video, just found a comment of me spreading love, reminding someone that I'm sorry for this side's hurt that they gave you, but just know you are loved. But this side decided to cast hate because they lumped me with this side. And at that moment, I felt lost in my identity. At that moment, I felt uncomfortable in my skin. To the point where if I can't identify as a Christian without feeling guilty and without feeling like by saying I'm a Christian, I'm automatically this because that's what this side assumed. Then who am I as a preacher? But if I can't sit there and say I, I align with this side out of love and share love no matter what, because this side tells me that I'm going to hell then who am I as an ally? And I know that I, that is nowhere near the same as what trans beloved go through. I will never know the hate and persecution that they've entailed. I have small tastes with different parts of my life. As a father, I have small tastes in different parts of not being able to protect your child from harm in all cases. And these are all things that have processed as a father. I want to be able to protect from all evils, but I know that this side is gonna continue to cast stones and cast hate. And I know that this side is going to continue to maybe embrace the child, but hate the father. Jesus has come to us to teach us to embrace the child. And through the child, we will get to the father. But Jesus has come to us to teach us to embrace love. And I want to reread sections of the gospel. You see, when we're talking about maps, we see Thomas saying to the Lord, we do not know where you are going, but to, and that's after Christ told him that, you know where I'm going. I've told you I'm going to my father. I will ascend. I've already told you that I'm going to be persecuted. I'm going to be put to death. I'm going to die on the cross. I've already told you that after death, I'm going to rise to the father and ascend to him and I'll sit at his right hand. I've already told you this, but Thomas goes, Lord, we don't know where you're going. What are you been speaking? And the Lord replies, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And that is a reminder to all of us as Christians. To those that want to sit there and just use doctrine to condemn. Old doctrine that was used to condemn even back when it was written. Old doctrine that created separation in the church and created ultimately what Christ was sent to do, which was to radicalize and remind everybody of love. And when we talk about the Lord's map, we talk about not only where God is, Lord Jesus Christ is going, but we talk about Jesus's life. Jesus gave us the roadmap we need of how we are to act, who we are to love, it's not hard. Yesterday I shared a post from my brother, my friend, fellow pastor Jimmy, who has helped with our ministry multiple times, especially at Christmas with his songs for our services. And yet the post went along the lines of spreading the gospel passage that says to love thy neighbor. I have loved you. And then it has the part that says us. And we go, wait, what? But wait, hold on. Do we have to? 
And then it says, Jesus, reread what I just said. Meaning there is no exception to loving your neighbor. And when I see this side spreading hate and using the Bible to spread hate, boy, do I get frustrated. Boy, do I almost hate those conversations and those interactions that I end up having to try to spread light and love and truth. Whether it's the college kid who only knows what the preacher is telling them. Whether it's the person who's been to a church, the same church, for 50 years. But all they've learned is the same doctrine that condemns from a Bible that was mistranslated years prior. All they know is that. And I don't condemn them for that being all they know. But I do ask anyone that I combat with on this side to educate yourself to critically think to ultimately look deeper than just what you're being told at face value because anybody can take any other section of this book and use it to condemn but the section they can't take to condemn somebody the section they can't take to do anything else but spread love is the four gospels That's why those that want to put people to death, those that want to eradicate populations through politics and greed and nationalistic points of view, they don't touch the Gospels unless it's trying to convince people to join their side. They got to make it look good in the beginning. That doesn't mean it looks good at the end. Because Jesus never came to this world to condemn it, but he came to this world to save it. If we look further in to our gospel, Christ says, If you had known me, you would have known my Father also, and from now on you know him and have seen him. And what has happened But another disciple, Philip, comes to him and says, Lord, show us the Father. And it is sufficient. Now imagine being Christ. I mean, nowadays with the patience level of many people, they would sit there and be like, Oh, boy, are we kidding me right now? I've only lived on this earth and walked with you for days, months, and you still have to say you haven't seen the Father, yet you've seen the miracles I performed, which is through the Spirit, which is through God himself. Who is allowing me to do this. The Father allowed me to do this. And yet you're still asking. And that's pretty much nicely what Jesus says back. Have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me? He who has seen me has seen the Father. Think about this. He's literally nicely telling Philip, dude, I've been with you. You've seen me. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You've seen the works I've done. You've seen what the Father has done on earth. The miracles. The healing. The saving. You've seen that I've come to in a radical way to sit there and basically say, this is not what church is supposed to be like. This is not what religion is supposed to be like. We are supposed to go forth and help those in need. We're supposed to Help the poor, help the sick, clothe those in need. We're supposed to sit with those being persecuted. Heal the blind, heal the sick. When Christ is healing the blind to make them see, he's opening their eyes to the light and the truth that he brings to this world. But yet, far too many don't understand that of the gospel. Far too many just walk away and sit there and only dwell on the fact that their sins are forgiven, but that's because Jesus went to heaven. And far too many focus on the fact that we have to, we have to call others to Christ. We have to call others to the kingdom of God. We have to save souls. But they're not reaching out and saving the souls that 
need help. They're trying to change people to conform to their narrow-minded form of Christianity. The narrow-minded form that says you're either with us or you're against us. The narrow-minded form that teaches this side that all Christians are bad and hateful. That all gospel preachers only preach condemnation and hate. That all pastors and reverends and ministers that sit in a pulpit are only spreading hate, even if they teach love of Jesus Christ. Because what spiteful, hateful God must it be to condemn people? Because that's all this side wants to say. And yet we look at our roadmaps. Each of ours has a different destination. My destination led me here. But my destination and my map has not ended. It grows each and every day. My destination has led me to my state capital in support of my fellow brothers and sisters. My map has led me to this ministry online, growing to over 700 between the platforms. My map has led me to meeting amazing people along my journey whose stories are theirs to tell, but I'm glad that I've learned. And I'm waiting to see where that map continues to go. I'm waiting to see where your map continues to go because your map's not ended. You haven't reached the X on the treasure map of X marks the spot. No, you're not done yet, and neither am I. We're not done yet as a ministry. We're not done yet as a congregation. We may be scattered all over this country and this world, but we are still one body. As long as we are one body in love. One body bringing hope to the hopeless. One body understanding the Lord's map of who we are to be as Christians, who we are to be as the chosen, who we are to be as disciples. So I strongly urge you, beloved, to follow your map, but allow your map to align with the Lord's map as well in love and light. And to always understand that we can reach out to our Lord Jesus. And to let ourselves rest on the rock on which he is the cornerstone in this metaphoric church. In this ministry especially. Because we saw in scripture passages in Second Peter, in First Peter chapter two, that coming to Jesus as a to a living stone. Jesus was rejected by men. We may be rejected by man or by this side of man, but that doesn't mean that our map is done. That doesn't mean that our map still isn't aligning with the Lord's map. I sometimes want to believe and tend to believe that when I'm being persecuted from this side that only wants to conform and condemn, I must be doing something right by the Lord's map. So when you're struggling today, when you're struggling this week, remember to realign with the Lord's map. Remember to realign in love and light and kindness. Because if we love our neighbors as Christ loved us, then that's all going to align. If 
if we love our neighbors as Christ loved us, then we are going to continue to bring hope back to this world, to this country. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we look to you today, thankful for the scripture passages of this week. Thankful for the Gospel of John, reminding us of the roadmap that the Lord Jesus Christ has laid out for us through his teachings during his life, to letting us know where his final X marked the spot, that he will sit with God the Father for eternity at the right hand. Father, we come to you looking for your continued strength as we travel our maps, working to align them as close as we can to the Lord's, so that one day we would sit with you in eternity as well. But help us to bring that glorious heaven of love to the earth now. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen and amen. Our final hymn is How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hand I see the stars, I hear a rolling thunder, thy power throughout thy universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art, and sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died. To take away my sin And sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art And sings my soul My Savior God to thee Thou art, 
how great thou art. My soul, my Savior, God, to thee, how great thou art. beloved. Let us pray. Risen Christ, you prepare a place for us in the home of the mother and father of us all. Draw us more deeply into yourself through scripture. Read water, splash, bread, broken, wine poured so that when our hearts are troubled, we will know you more completely as the way, the truth, and the life. Amen and Amen. Beloved friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, and our non-binary brothers, or our, <clears throat> our non-binary beloved, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Go in peace. Have a blessed Sunday and a blessed week. Amen and amen.